Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something about Twitter at the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with the Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake, Sissel's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? It looks like Jenny was in a bit of a sticky situation. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> You're not fooling anyone, kid. Tell us where your little friends are hiding, and we'll let you go. His partner, the burly thug, scratched his head with a frown as he watched Jenny continue to sob relentlessly. I don't know, bro. She looks pretty clueless. I stand corrected. You are fooling one of us. But not me. I know your friends are holed up somewhere while the news twists the Lorelei family against us. If you want to leave here in one piece, you will tell us where they are. I have no clue! I haven't seen my friends since the night you guys threatened them! Are they safe? Are you saying you don't know where they are either? Harry's hands twitched and he looked like he was resisting the urge to shove Ginny out the nearest window. The burly thug shot his partner with a doubtful look. You know, bro, I can beat her up for a bit, a bit of some info if you want. But uh, I feel kind of bad roughing up a little girl. It's not very manly, you know. Harry groaned tiredly. We're already being suspected of murdering four kids. No need to play into their hands and add another to the list. Ginny sniffed loudly as the two men began whispering furiously amongst themselves. Through her dripping crocodile tears, she kept a close eye on them from the corner of her eyes and strained her ears to catch every word. She didn't remember much after the two men threw a bag over her head and dragged her into the car. Ed tied her up and drilled her for almost an hour for information, but her melodramatic wailing managed to buy her some time. During her little interrogation, Jenny managed to learn quite a bit about the two men's situation. They'd been bombarded with calls from the Lorelei family after the news report aired, demanding answer on the whereabouts of these missing kids. And more importantly, the boss's son, Owen Lorelei. The two debt collectors were furious and desperate. No one seemed to take their word that Owen attempted to interfere with the family business that night, or the fact that he was still alive when they left. They were left with the question, where was he? When the thugs didn't have an answer, many of their family contacts simply hung up. Already, most of their family connections were ghosting them when they called for aid. Ursula's plan is really coming together. Hmm? Haley suddenly materialized next to her in a wisp of ash. The thugs did not bat an eye as she approached, unseen and unheard. The ashened wish stared at Jenny for a long moment before letting out a sigh. Why do you always end up in dangerous situations in every timeline? Jenny shrugged with a grin. Dunno, keeps things interesting. I prefer you live a more boring life. She turned towards the whispering thugs behind her. What will you have me do with these two? I can probably strike them down with horrific organ failure, or at the very least, gonorrhea. Jesus. Uh, we're gonna keep that as a backup plan, but we can't just get rid of them for now. We gotta make sure Owen's crazy family doesn't feel obligated to defend them in any way, otherwise my friends might have to stay on the run. Did you get what I asked for? Haley rolled her eyes. The ugly one's gun? Yes, I've hidden it in your jacket pocket. Try not to get noticed, or hurt. If they try anything, I will be forced to defend you. Aw, aren't you sweet? The wish scoffed and disappeared in a wisp of smoke. Ginny straightened up in her seat as the two thugs finished their conversation and returned their attention to her. The shrewd thug glared down at her sniffing face with disdain. You've put us in quite the pickle, young lady. I will have answers, one way or another. Oh no, I'm so sorry! I didn't mean to cause it any trouble, I just wanted to find my friends! The burly thug cracked his knuckles as he loomed over Jenny. I hate to do this, kid, but if you don't start coughing up some answers, you're gonna end up with a few broken bones. I don't like the idea of beating up kids, but getting immersed by the family is even worse. Jenny felt the cold chill of Haley's presence hover protectively over her and smiled. What? Are you gonna break my bones? You sure you got it in you? The burly thug frowned with a low grumble. Huh? You think I can't, kid? This ain't a joke. I'm just saying, you don't look that tough. Ha! Huh, I could stab you in half with one hand, kid. Says the guy who got beat up by a kid in a Batman cosplay. That seemed to have struck a nerve. The burly thug growled and seized her roughly by the collar of her jacket. Alright, that's it. I'm throwing her into the lake. Excuse me. Would you mind repeating that? The two thugs throws. The two thugs froze, not the two thugs. Jesus. The sound of clacking leather heels echoed through the small apartment as someone gently opened the door. The two thugs exchanged terrified looks before turning around and bowing nervously. Oh, hey there, boss! 
Oh, Leander, sir, we weren't expecting you so suddenly. Oh. A tall, thin man stepped into the room and fidgeted with his tie. His face was tense with a stressed frown as he cleared his throat loudly. Gentlemen, what in the world is going on here? We did not need another PR nightmare right after very legal seafoods burned to the ground. I'm still fending off the dozens of lawsuits from that place. The shrewd thug coughed and looked up gingerly. We did not mean to cause any trouble, sir. A few nights ago, we were running a routine collection job with nothing out of the ordinary. Is that so? How did my son get involved? What do you mean? Well, the person we were collecting on was an acquaintance of your son. Owen tried to interfere and bribe us to leave his baker friend alone, but let us assure you that we shooed him off without incident. Not a hair was missing off that boy's head the last we saw of him. Oleander scratched his chin thoughtfully. Strange. Just now I sent my men to investigate one of your safe houses and we found a large briefcase containing, and I quote, an irresponsible amount of money. Coincidentally, I also made some inquiries on my son's accounts, and he withdrew that exact amount of cash several nights ago. How would you explain this? The shrewd thug swallowed and stumbled over his words as he struggled to keep his words steady. Well, your son did try to bribe us to spare his friend. And you took it? His bribe? Yes. And now my son and his four friends are missing. Well, you see... The two thugs glanced at each other, a wave of panic slowly setting in. Oleander watched them squirm in silence for several moments before letting out a tired sigh. Come now, I'm giving you a chance to talk. I expect your excuses to be exceptional. Oleander's gaze pierced through them like a knife. The two thugs froze stiff, hands clenched at their sides as they struggled to find a response. But boss, I swear we didn't lay a single finger on your kid. The things they're saying on the news are all lies. He's right, sir. We believe your son's still alive and orchestrating a smear campaign on us. We will get to the bottom of this, I swear. I did not come here for empty platitudes, but I am not an unreasonable man. His eyes pierced the two men in a chilling, calm gaze. You will have one day to find my son and his friends alive, safe and sound, and to prove you did not attempt to harm him. One day. Leander adjusted his tie and sighed. You know, I generally try to be a nice person, steering the family towards a more reputable direction and all that. But do not mistake patience for weakness. If you cross the line, you will be dealt with. Have I understood? The two thugs nodded furiously. Despite the situation, Oleander smiled as he turned to leave. Very good. I look forward to hearing the good news tomorrow. Oof! There was a thud as the older man tripped over Jenny's tied up and wriggling body, tumbling onto the floor in a dust dusty heap. He stumbled back onto his feet, startled. Oh, hello, mister. What in the world? Why did you have a tiny crying child tied up in this apartment? Well, you see, uh, this is the girl we've been spouting all those lies on the news. Excuse me, are you saying you kidnapped this little girl for canceling you on television? The shrewd thug cleared his throat loudly. We suspect that she's working with those five missing people us to slander us, sir. What kind of desperate conspiracy are you two brewing? Look at the poor thing, she's clearly terrified. Seizing the opportunity, Jenny dramatically burst into another bout of theatrical sobs. Mister, you have to help me. These men said they were going to throw me into the lake, just like they did to my friends. Oleander looked aghast as he helped untie Jenny from her bonds. Not to worry, dear girl. They will do no such thing while I am here. The elder man shot the two thugs with a stern look. I thought I made it clear to the family that we no longer conduct business that endangers children. But sir, your brother. If you're using my unhinged brother as the crux of your argument, you have truly become desperate. Oleander shook his head warily as he helped Jenny back onto her feet. Come now, young lady, let's get you back home. Are you hurt at all? I think I'm okay. Jenny peered at the older man curiously. So this was Owen's dad. He certainly wasn't what she had imagined. I saw you on the news. You're a very brave soul to speak out against such wrongdoings. I'm so sorry for all that's happened to you. Thanks. As far as kidnappings go, this has been a pretty fun experience. An amused smile stretched across the older man's face as he led Jenny out the door. Oh, to be young. 
Pardon my tactlessness, but you are friends with my son Owen, yes? It has been an age since I've last seen him, or at all. Is he well? Um, well, he's extremely missing right now. Oh, I suppose you're right. With some luck, you'll be reunited with the rest of your friends soon. He shot the two thugs one last piercing glare before he pleasantly guided Ginny out of the building. The two thugs stiffened, remaining stone still until their boss was out of earshot. Marv crouched near the window as he watched Oleander and Ginny casually make their way down the street out of their clutches. Bro, we're fucked, aren't we? The shrewd thug gnawed on his lips frantically, his gaze trained on Ginny's retreating back. Perhaps, but I think I may have found a way out. Oh boy. I stuck my head out of the window of Morse's dingy, dingy car as it slowly patrolled the quiet streets. There was no one around in this little suburban neighborhood, save for the occasional pigeon pecking into precision mani manicured lawns. Are you sure Jenny's around here? This place looks dead. This was the last location pinged by her phone before she disappeared. Keep an eye out. She has to be nearby. In the front passenger seat, Herschel grumbled under his breath as he anxiously pulled at the edge of his shirt. Poor kid must be terrified. I should have never involved you lot in this. You're a real wellspring of optimism, Herschel. Come on, boss. Regretting things outside your control isn't going to help us find her. Relax. They're unlikely to harm her. They've been suspected of kidnapping four and a half kids. They probably don't want to add a confirmed fifth to their crimes. I'm more worried they'll squeeze her for information about the rest of us. Wait. Who's the half kid in this equation? Morse shot him an unimpressed look. Anyway, let's focus on searching for Jenny. She's a tough kid, but we can't expect her to wiggle her way out of every spot of trouble. <sighs> hey guys, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh my god. The car screeched to a halt as we all scrambled towards the driver's side window, gaping in disbelief. Teach, how did you get here? She peeked into the car with a smug grin. Well, you see, I got kidnapped for real and was held hostage in an empty apartment nearby while those debt collectors tried to extort information out of me. Tried, at least. Thankfully, Owen's dad showed up and gave them a stern talking to. He even offered me a ride home. I was going to accept, but then I saw you guys creeping down the street, so I figured I'd come with you instead. Ginny squinted. Morse, what are you wearing? It's 90 degrees out. Aren't you sweltering in that? Yes, get in the car. Cecil immediately pulled Ginny into a suffocating hug as she tried to squeeze into the back seats of the two of us. It's good to have you back safe and sound. Heh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm glad to be back. It sounds like I missed a lot of action. So, have you guys been holding up at Morse's place? Have you guys been holding up at Morse's place? This old... Ah! God, freaking hiccups. So, have you guys been holding up at Morse's place this whole time? Dreadfully boring. <laughs> oh god, hiccups. I think he got the more genuine kidnapping experience out of all of us. Morse cleared his throat loudly from the driver's seat. You mentioned that you met the head of the Lorelei family. Oh, yeah, he's Owen's dad, isn't he? Turns out he's a really nice guy. He told off those two thugs for kidnapping me and apologized for the inconvenience and all that. He looked a little stressed, though. Oh! Jenny's eyes suddenly lit up as she dug furiously through her jacket pockets. I stole this gun off of that thug with a stupid hat. This has, to get, this has got to be useful for your whole plan, right? Morse took the sleek black pistol from Jenny, his hawk-like eyes tracing over the metallic surface with a small smile. He almost looked impressed. Not bad. Not bad at all, Jenny. Let's get you all back to the robin's nest. I want to hear every detail of what you heard while you were at the Lorelei's. With that, Morse cranked up the AC and hit the gas. We sped off back towards our temporary home with Jenny in tow and a new sense of hope and relief in our chests. Behind us, unnoticed at a discreet distance, was a small black car in quiet pursuit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Trezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!